uh, to be honest, Keith, that we've had this problem really since October. You know, I've been saying since October that they've got to do something about these marches. They've got to do something about the fact that they seem to be free to take over parts of London as and when they choose. Um, that people who wish to demonstrate against them, um, like the Iranian guy who was who was pulled off the uh, two different uh, situations because he was saying that Hamas were terrorists, to now have Gideon uh, told that he's openly Jewish, he needs to get out of the way. It's an extraordinary state of affairs. And also, I want to put to you, and I'm sorry to make this such a long question, you know, I'm amazed at how many people have said, oh, well, the thing is, he's obviously an agent provocateur and he obviously went there to cause a problem. Well, first of all, uh, Gideon, even if he was a journalist, you'd probably say that's very interesting investigative journalism, wouldn't you? Yeah. And you would have to say, well, what he uncovered was extremely alarming. By the way, I've just, for those uh, people uh, out there, this is the first night of Passover, and I've just interrupted my family Passover feast to join you, Mike. And well, no, we're not kind. eating bread containing the blood of Palestinians, contrary to the Arab school book or the people on the hate marches. But um, coming back to your question, Mike, in all seriousness, um, look, for whatever reason he was there, whether you believe him or not, what was exposed is very obvious. And I, I actually don't agree with you, Mike. It's happened long before October the 7th. Jewish people in this country have felt this for years and years. Let me tell you, for years and years. There have been umpteen marches from Stop the War. You go back, for example, to uh, just before the uh, American and, uh, and British invasion of Iraq the second time, mm. there was a march in London. Why? I, uh, they had to put it on there. But if you look at the placards, which are all socialist worker placards, by the way, they've got all the socialist worker emblems on there. It said on it, um, do not attack Iraq, freedom for Palestine. Typical left wing sort of label they all want to jump on top of. The truth is, no, Jews do not feel safe going into central London with these marches. And the fact that a policeman stopped a Jewish person walking across the road, in fact, threatened to arrest him for doing so, basically is saying, you know, let's persecute the innocent here. Le and also admitting to the fact that the crowd who were uh, there in the hate march is effectively admitting they could be violent, aggressive, hostile. Well, says it all, doesn't it, Mike? Well, it does, and that is the problem. And let me bring in Leroy Logan, his former police superintendent. Leroy, thanks for joining us. Um, it seems to me the problem here is that the police who are on the street are sort of caught in the middle because they've obviously been told by their superiors and possibly by Mark Rowley himself, you know, you've got to be so careful here. We don't want to up un upset the people marching for free Palestine. And so we want to try and keep the Jews away. I mean, clearly that's been the message, hasn't it? Well, I'd be surprised if that's the message uh, to keep um, Jewish people away. I, I, I think it's, as you say, police are, are in a rock and a hard place. Yeah. They, they, they have no powers to stop these marches. Uh, and it begs the question, why hasn't Parliament put in legislation to say, listen, there is a set number of marches you can have. It can't go on for but months. But I, I thought, like I thought when, when, because we've had these conversations for a long yep. time, haven't we, you and I? I thought there was a situation where the chief of Metropolitan Police could ask the Home Secretary to could. cancel the march. Yeah, yeah. So you have a, they have the power to do that, but they don't. Well, there is that. Or Parliament could put in legislation so the Commissioner doesn't have to. Um, the legislation would dictate that. So that, that that's the first thing. And then... Um, You've got to recognise that officers have discretion how they're going to deal with things. Sometimes they're not totally au fait with the legislation and don't know how to put it across in a way that it's actually for that person's well-being and safety. Because if you look at it uh, another way, if he had said, oh, yeah, go right ahead and walk through that crowd, police would have been lambasted for allowing... A Jewish person getting um, a hiding for nothing. Well, or surely that's his choice, around. though. Well, I mean, if that was the police's job, surely they'd be stopping people from getting assaulted in every situation. But, 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 but they're creating a situation suggesting that he might be assaulted, which is not the same thing. No, well, it, <laughs> it's really it, it not, is theoretical. Is it? No, I understand, but the thing... I, I, I mean, I'm that's not like putting a police officer down on, on, on sort of Old Compton Street at four o'clock in the morning, so I wouldn't walk down there if I were you, um, or stopping them from doing it because it might not be safe. Well, yeah. you might want to walk down there. You might want to take the risk. 
Yeah, but the thing is, we, we, you're trying to facilitate a protest with the minimum of disruption to the public and bystanders. So it, it's just a question of if he's allowed to cross the road and it's against their instructions because they were saying, well, that march has to go through with a minimum of disruption and, and any risks to, to, to anyone, then the officers have to hold that line. Well, let me go back to Keith on that. Keith, uh, you were listening to what Leroy had to say there. We also know that um, less than half of the public now trust the police. I mean, I, I don't think it's the police's job to stop people from, from walking across the road in any situation, do you? Do you know what, Mike? I don't even know what the police's job is these days. Over 80% of burglaries go un unsolved in London. You know, of, like I said earlier today, the, 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 the same mob who uh, go on the Just Stop Oil, um, whatever they do in disrupting people wanting to get to work or, or to hospital, they've obviously gone silent because they've got something else to sort of jump on the bandwagon on. But what do the police do? Those people are disturbing the peace. If you've got people who can't get to work, people who cannot get to, to uh, hospital and people take their own uh, take the law into their own hands to try and get them out of the way and the police arrest them, there's something wrong here. Yeah. We have to go after the protagonists. We have to go after the people who deserve to be gone after, the people who are truly uh, uh, disturbing the peace. And the police are just not doing their job. Crimes. Look at knife crime. Look at the situation with the fact last week we read that in Tesco's they're going to stop people coming in in a certain town because they're worried about all the uh, the shoplifters. Hello, are we not a country of law and order here? Well, that's a good question, one from Leroy. Are we not a country of law and order anymore? So few people trust the police. What's gone wrong, do you think? Well, it's not an overnight. This has been developing for 10, 15 years where... The, the grip on um, policing has slipped. I mean, I'm not making excuses for senior leaders and, and the wider organisation for not um, getting a grip of, you know, basic policing. Mm. But when you lose um, such a large number, 20,000 cops nationally... Yeah, but that's um, not the issue, though, is no, it? No, 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 no. But in, really all honesty, in all honesty, you, you've got to bring it into context around officers are leaving in their droves, right? So as they bring them in, they're leaving... Um, and as a result of that, you are not getting experienced cops anymore. Right. I mean, even when you're talking about your burglaries, I was burgled in um, 2016 and I had my car broken into um, early this year and the calibre of officers, it's not there. They, they, they are young officers with six months in investigating quite complex issues uh, and, and crimes. So in, in all honesty, there is a real um, skills gap, an experience gap, in, in the Met, and it's not just in uh, p policing on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's also around how they're, they're dealing right. with these large operations. Yeah, OK. Well, let me go back to Keith. But, Keith, I mean, can you imagine, for example, it may well be that there are fewer police than there were, uh, maybe all the good ones have left, but I can't imagine, personally, a police officer going up to a Muslim and saying, well, you're obviously openly Muslim. If I were you, I wouldn't walk over there because something bad might happen to you. I think it's very unlikely. And what we saw a few weeks ago was the whole uh, subject about the Islamists dictating the narrative in this country. And we, um, and we know that to be true. And the police and the government have been walking and, you know, sort of sleepwalking. This is a massive, massive problem. You know, we only had a poll, what was it, last week, week before, where you've got the 32% of Muslims in this country want Sharia law. I mean, if we don't wake up and smell the coffee, it's not going to be unpleasant for Jewish people to live here. It's going to be unpleasant for people like you and everyone else to live here, Mike. The police need to get a grip. And if Mark Rowley is worth his salt, he will be able to delegate uh, effectively and be a leader, educate his force about how to communicate, how to uh, keep people safe and how to go after the protagonist rather than the person who's defenceless and innocent. Yes, and, and I think that's right. Keith, thanks very much indeed. Uh, Keith Fisher there. I think... Uh, Keith Fraser, rather, sorry. Um, let me end with you, Leroy. I think he's right. I mean, surely what's gone wrong here is that the police have kind of lost the ability to see not necessarily who the bad guys are, but to see where the trouble is coming from. And they're allowing those who are causing the trouble to continue, and they're stopping other people who might want to go about their business from doing so. Isn't that what's going on? Well, that's... 
could be a, a good reason, but I, I really think there there is um, a lack of, I think, skills in how you're policing. I mean, I, mean, when, even, I used to be based in Westminster, right. so we used to have a, a very good brief from central ops. Ops would give us a clear steer on how they've dealt with the stakeholders who, you know, are asking for the, the, the march or whatever. And as a result of that, we were very clear. It seems like all the legislative changes as well, right. I think officers are confused. And, and that's why they're blundering into situations. And if you've got someone who's... Um, you know, got his um, camera crew and his security, and they're willing to try one or but two. But everything's on camera three. now, isn't it? I mean, there's people they're filming Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, but the, the body how many cams times? Being and it's, it's not just in the, these um, situations. But how many times you see officers being shown to be heavy-handed or very flippant or very rude, and you know they disregard that. Yeah. And they've got body cams as well. Exactly. To, I mean, this is it somebody. So, I mean, you know, just knowing from it's what about I know. It's about supervision as well. Yeah. The lack of supervision. Listen, I used to be out and about with my officers, even when I was a superintendent. Yeah. I'll be riding around the streets of Hackney to make, ensure that what my strategy is being rolled out yeah. by by the troops. And as a result of that, if it wasn't, I'll, I'll develop them. Right. And, and if they. But also, not but surely you would also, as a, as a leader, you would say to them, "Look, this is how you operate, this is how you act. You don't speak in that way to people, members yeah. of the public who have yeah. not done anything wrong. You yeah. don't call people openly Jewish. You don't. You wouldn't call somebody. Well, you're obviously a black man, so you shouldn't go down there. Or you're yeah. obviously a white man, so you shouldn't go down. You wouldn't talk like that. Of course that. not.